Hello, this is Sean Standard. I am going to demonstrate the modular blade plate system. As you can see here, we have a infant blade that is 25 millimeters in length and three sets of valgus plates, which represent 140 degrees, 130 degrees, and 120 degree valgus. This is our model representing a congenital femoral deficiency with severe coxivera, some external femoral torsion and extension type deformity. So you start the case by first, and this is mainly the saw bones, there's a whole soft tissue regimen for what we call the super hip. But once you've finished the soft tissue approach, you really wanna make sure that you can take the child's leg and place that femur into the corrected position. So if you imagine the shaft being translated back into the right position, that gives you a neck shaft angle of about a approximately 130 degrees, and that's what we're gonna to try to achieve. So the first part is the insertion of the guide wire. I've already done this under fluoroscopy, as you can see in the image uh, on the screen, that we've placed the guide wire in a 1-1 position up the femoral neck in both the AP and the sagittal position here. Now once that is accomplished, then we start with inserting the chisel blade. If you're having problems inserting the 1-1 position, this is a guide that you can place in the center hole. And then if you notice, they have different markings for five degree divergent, 10 degrees, and also different translations. And so you can use this to fine tune your first wire. You also have triangles that you could subtend a wire. If you wanted to subtend a 30 degree angle, you could also do that. Uh, but the whole premise of the set is to place a one one wire place your chisel blade into that one position and then choose the appropriate angled plate to achieve your correction. So this is much different than the fixed angled blade plates. And so the next step is to break the cortex with the cortex breaker. So this cortex breaker slides over your guide wire and you use your drill to break the cortex. Now this is the same as setting your chisel footprint to either induce extension or flexion. And so how you can quantify that, you can use this gauge. And if I align my dial to the long axis of the bone, then that's going to give me 15 degrees of flexion. So the next step is to break the cortex using the cortex breaker that I have in place. It has this flexion extension guide. And so at this point, I'm going to extend the femur 20 degrees. If you align that with the femoral shaft, your blade plate is going to mimic this part of the, of the guide. And you can see how much correction between the shaft and the guide is gonna occur. And so since we're using saw bones, you have to do multiple Cortex breaking just because the material is very, very hard in these demonstrations. And so we break the cortex multiple times. And a lot of times that might not even be necessary, especially in some of the pediatric bone. So now that the cortex is broken, we have already, and if I remove this, have created a footprint for my chisel blade that's going to mimic the 20 degree extension correction. So at this point, we now want to measure our wire. And this neck probably measures a true 35 or 40. We're gonna use a smaller blade just because of the material that's being used. And we're now going to insert the chisel blade. To insert the chisel blade, you first attach the chisel blade to the driver. and that's simply connected with this threaded portion. Now this is ready to be inserted. You can either put the cap like this to strike the end with a mallet to insert it. There's also an extension cap that gives you a longer handle, a little bit heavier, or you can place this with a slap hammer as such. So now we're gonna place the chisel blade using the extension handle into the bone down the guide wire. Now the guide wire is in the one-one position, so I know that my chisel 
blade is going to follow that wire. You follow this under fluoroscopy. I insert it and with these saw bones, I would uh, advise insertion and drilling and such. But in real life, this is the beauty of this system. As you place it over the guide wire, you hit it in once and you're done. There's no back in and out. There's no malleting with a chisel. So I take the mallet and I drive it. And I want to leave it just slightly proud. And you'll see, I'll show it in this angle, that the plate is not quite flush yet. You want to leave a little bit of room to put your final plate on. Then you do your final impaction. So at this point, I'm going to remove the handle. And I still have this joystick if I want it. If not, I can take the joystick off completely. At this point, you're ready for your osteotomy. And so the osteotomy uh, is determined by the width of this knuckle on the plate. And so if you imagine the plate's going to be here and I want to do my osteotomy just below this in a transverse fashion, allowing for good bone contact. Now you have to remember this is a Wagner type valgus osteotomy where a transverse osteotomy is performed and the lateral cortical angle is going to invaginate into the shaft of the distal fragment. And so we can grab our saw and perform the osteotomy. So I'm going to do a simple transverse osteotomy, approximately three to five millimeters below where my knuckle would be in this area here. And I'm just going to look at it in the sagittal plane, make sure I like So the osteotomy is complete. The other beauty of this system is that you're not putting a chisel into a moving fragment or putting your blade plate back into a moving fragment because everything is already secure. So we have the osteotomy complete. I can then place my plate onto the, the chisel blade. You place your multi-axial guide onto the plate and it automatically locks it into position. You take your locking bolt and you connect your plate to your chisel blade. And at this point, you have now completed the insertion and this will have significant torque on it. It's extremely strong. And now we can take this off and we can now remove the guide wire if you choose. The next step is to go ahead and reduce the shaft to the proximal segment and you can hold that in place with the verbruge. And so the verbruge is a special design verbruge with a different circumference. We, there's a small and a medium for the child and the infant and there's a larger one for the adolescent and it has a little inset dimple nipple that goes into the hole that holds in a great fashion and so you and with this type of a bruise system you can get a lot of control with rotation and you can dial in rotation and then you can clamp it back and it'll have great hold. And so at this point, we've finished our reduction. And if you notice, this is a 130 degree correction. And let's say if we decided that was too much valgus, how would we correct that at this stage? At this stage, all we simply do is remove the verbruge. I would disconnect my plate. And I would choose my plate that is 120 degrees. And then I would place that back on. Again, using my drill guide trick. I 
again reduce and now we have reduced the angle of valgus and if this is what you like we then proceed to put our screws in and we'll do a final impaction so the screw insertion we have both locking and non-locking screws so now we're going to connect the plate to the shaft after achieving the reduction in the proper neck shaft angulation. This is a locking tower. The two distal holes are locking holes. The proximal hole is a compression non-locking hole. So I'm gonna do a compression screw first. We're going to put it eccentrically in the hole for compression. And as you compress, we'll loosen the verbrouge. And then I'll finalize this with locking screws. You can also put compression or non-locking screws in the distal holes as well. Those who don't like the idea of locking screws. And so we just got more compression as that angle digs into the distal fragment. We can now adjust minimally the flexion or extension. And if I want slightly more extension and my plate's oblique, I loosen my verbrouge with one screw in, I can slightly extend and now I can tighten my verbrouge. And I'm ready for my next locking screw. And so I go through the tower Tower came out, which is fine. I wish I knew how to do that routinely. And so you remove your tower and you put your locking screw in place. And some systems you can freehand the locking screw. This is not that system. This system has a very intimate fit. It's a great bite, but you have to use the, the locking tower you would also put another screw here. This is just saving time to look at the model. So we have now achieved a neck shaft angle of approximately 120 to 130 degrees. And again, you can choose different angulations depending on what plate you attach. And uh, that gives you the uh, availability of of the uh, variation and flexibility during surgery. And that's the beauty of the modular blade plate system. Now that the uh, locking screw has been placed, you would also add an additional screw, locking or non-locking your preference, and you finalize the fixation. And we want to finalize the final impaction where there's about five millimeters still left to kind of impact. To do this, you use the impacting device Put that in place and then you use your mallet yep and again this is a saw bone and so we'll make sure we don't explode it and you can see that's your final impaction and what's important is a couple basic principles in proximal femoral osteotomy. We have now recreated a normal neck shaft angle of about 120 degrees, probably between 120 and 130. We had the flexibility to adjust our neck shaft depending on the plate that we used. And this design plate allows for lateral translation. So if you're valgusizing, your shaft has to laterally translate. Designs that medially translate is biomechanically wrong. When you varicize uh, from a valgus position, that's where you have a medial translation. And we'll show you that in the next video. So at this point, we're completed. We have corrected the flexion deformity with extension. We have corrected the angulation of the proximal femur. And we have rotated, and we probably could have rotated some more, and that's really depending on, on the clinical situation. Thank you.